we worship one. True God or multiple false gods, would you agree with that? Like America. Hold on. When we fast forward to go to modern day Babylon, there is an institution or system just like ancient Babylon, which also worships multiple gods. There's only one institution, young man, and I was in it for 40 years, that worships multiple gods. What's that? It is the Roman Catholic Church. What's the ten horns? Ten horns and the ten crowns and the ten horns are like in Daniel when you had the statue. Yeah. And when you go to the feet, you had the ten toes. Yeah. The ten toes symbolically point to Revelation 13. And those are basically what we call today uh, modern day England, if you will. Uh, forgive me, you're a modern day, forgive me, young man, modern day Europe. So the European countries that sit there, that's who the ten kings are referring to. And who's the whore that they're going to hate? Please. Who's the whore that they're going to hate? Well, the great whore that sits upon many waters, the little horn of Daniel, or Daniel Yeah, what's that little, seven. yeah, that little horn. What's that little horn? Well, I'm going to tell you. The king of the north in chapter 11 of the book of Daniel, and mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, all of them are the same entity. All of them are the same institution. All of them it's are the Roman Catholic Church. Now, this is... I'm trying to explain to people what's happening behind the scenes. But what I'm saying, they said the ten horns shall hate the horse. And in Revelation 17 and 16, it said the ten horns will, will destroy the horse. And you're saying the horse is the Catholic Church. It is the Catholic Church. So the ten that horns is, is a European, is, you said European countries? Well, it, or Europe? Europe, I mean, all of Europe. So, how's, yeah. so what do you mean they're going to hate it? Like, okay, read this, read that. Revelation. 17 and 16, 16 yeah. Revelation 17 and 16 and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire how was how was the ten horns gonna burn the uh, Catholic Church in fire how will Europe burn the Catholic Church well, Europe is not necessarily going to burn the Catholic Church, okay? Again, you, you said it's ten horns for Europe. Well, uh, and they are. There's no question. You had ten rise up, three fell you, in, in, ancient, um, in ancient Europe. You had the Ostagos, the Herulis, and the Vandals, okay? The Bible says in Daniel 7, in Daniel 7. Are you all together? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. This is Solomon. Now, Mike, what's your name, young man? Hawad. Hawad? Hawad. H A W A D. Hawad. Nice yeah. to meet you. What's your name, sir? I'm Mishak. Nice to meet you. And where's your name? Mikhail. Mikhail? Mikhail. 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 Okay, well, it's nice to meet you, gentlemen. Um, are you guys happen to be biblical Hebrews? Yes. Well, I, I praise the Lord. At least you guys are willing to, you as. The but you haven't understood, you haven't given us understanding uh, yeah. of, of Revelation 17 and 16. Because the ten horns, they come out the fourth beast. Who do you think, the, the fourth beast is Rome, correct? That is correct. Okay, yeah. so the ten horns are going to come out of Rome. And who does, what's the seven heads? The seven heads are, let me show you this thing, okay? You guys use the King James, don't you? Yeah, we, we use it for anything but no, yeah, King James. No, we prefer the King James. Let me go. And I'll have the Bible explain in itself. Yeah. You know what's going on over here? Yeah. What's that? Those are Iranians. They're protesting about women, uh, women's freedom or something like that. Yeah. Jobs and stuff. Yeah. Well, Iran's really going to be destroyed, so. If you really want to be destroyed, you'll have to tell them later. Okay. Now you're asking the seven heads. Yeah. Okay, the Bible explains who the seven heads go. Revelation 17, 9. Yeah. Says, here's the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Do you think those are literal mountains? Well, hills, mountains, yes. And I can, and I can prove why. Why do you think they literal mountains? A woman of Bible prophecy stands for a 
Well, the, well, who is this woman in Revelation 17 talking about Babylon, right? The daughter yes. of Babylon. Yes. Okay. So, and you saying that's the Roman Catholic Church. Correct. So how did that sit on seven literal moments? Okay, because look it up. Go to your phone. You got your well, phone. I'm recording. Look up. The Vatican sits on seven hills or seven mountains. Yeah, but it also says that the seven heads, these seven heads are, are kingdoms, not literal mountains. Correct. Yeah, so it's not literal mountains, they're kingdoms and, gover and governments. No, 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 no. Yeah, because, okay, when it said the five are fallen, what did that mean? In Revelation uh, 17 and 10. Yeah, bring it that says, and there are seven kings, five. Not seven mountains, seven kings, right, Reed? Correct. Five are fallen and one is. Who's that one that is? How is the United States with seven literal mountains? The United States? Is a mountain? No, 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 no. Are they literal mountains, yes or no? That's what I'm trying to understand. What, you mean for this? Yeah, exactly. The seven heads are seven mountains. Are these seven literal mountains? Correct. If you look it, if you look it up, Rome, the Vatican, etc., is built on seven mountains. So which, so which one of the five, because it says five are falling, which five mountains fell? Well, it would be, um, it said, kings so five kings yeah but when fallen. you read verse 10 it says and there are seven kings some of the seven mountains five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet to come that's what you're trying to get so when you read a bible mountains are representing kingdoms right like, like read jeremiah 51 and 25 that's why you gotta go precept upon precept well i agree with you man yeah, let me show you. Let me show you something though. Uh, this is Jeremiah 51 and verse 25. It says, "Behold, oh, okay. I would." Oh yeah. Listen. Jeremiah, what is it? 51 and 25. 51, 25. Do you mind if you're recording that to show my face? Yeah, I will. No, we won't show your face. Yeah, nice. They recorded right there too, though. But we won't show y'all face. Oh yeah. <laughs> Behold. I'm pretty sure that camera more dangerous than my camera. Oh, yeah. Right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We're not going to show y'all face, though. Go ahead. Okay. It says, most societies desensitized by the uh, Yeah, no, that's all good. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain. Say well, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting that. Right. 51, what? 25. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. All right, it says, behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. So it's not, this is about Babylon. It's not a literal mountain that's destroying the earth. The mountains, King of Isaiah 2 and 2, mountains, and there's a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just some more just to, you know, uh, prove my point. Isaiah 2, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. So the Lord got a mountain, Reed. In the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. So we're not, all nations not literally gonna flow into a mountain. It's not, a, it's not the kingdom, Jerusalem. So mountains, the point is, and it's, it's a lot of a mountains, mountains and hills represent large kingdoms and smaller kingdoms. So when it says that the seven, uh, seven heads are seven mountains, these are seven uh, kingdoms. And from our understanding, which is the correct understanding, those seven king kingdoms is Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Russia, Germany, and Great Britain. The one that, that fell, and it is, well, five have fallen. So the five would be Greece, Spain, France, Germany, and Great Britain. And then Rome would be the one that uh, fell, and then Russia is the one that's going to last a little while. That's why also when you go to Revelation 13 and verse 2, it talks about the bear, the, the feet of the bear. What do you think that bear represents? What do you think, what do it represent? It represents me, the Persian. Why did it lean on one side? No, I'm not talking about Daniel 8. I'm talking about, uh, I'm not talking about Daniel 7. I'm talking about Revelation 13. Those are two different, two different, yeah. Revelation 1, 13? Yeah, verse 1 and 2. Media Persia took down Babylon in 626. Correct. Yeah, and it really on one side because. Oh, Revelation 13, what? Two. Yeah, well, one and two. Oh, okay, yeah. See, they're going back to the beast, which I saw. When you study this out, yeah. it is the papacy. There is no other entity. It is. And the beast, which I saw, was like unto a leopard. Who is a leopard? 
grease. Correct. Very good. And his feet were the feet of the bear. And here's the bear. Russia. No. Russia is the bear. And that uh, feet, because no, the feet, no, no. It's yeah, yes, yes. No, it's not, because the feet represent the the ending of it, the end of a kingdom. Russia would be the last kingdom to stand. You still never explained the seven mountains well, either. Let's stay, let's stay on one, one topic at a time. Okay, well, let's go back to this, because we were talking about that first. I'm going to go to either one. I'm comfortable with either. Well, man, I, either. I don't really explain it, man. I went to the Bible and showed you what a mountain. What a mountain stands for. No, you didn't. You didn't tell me who the five mountains. Or the hills. You didn't tell us who the, you said it was our five literal mountains. Run, and his mouth as a mouth of a lion. Yeah. Who was the lion? So you have the leopard, which is the Greeks. You have the bear, which is uh, Russia. And then you also have. That's not correct. That is correct. That is correct. Can you prove that that's some about any, anything else? Yeah, can, hold on. Can you read verse one first? Revelation 13 and 1. Before you go to two. And they stood yeah, upon one. the sand of the sea. <clears throat> and what does the sea stand for symbolic? Hold on, where we at? 13 and 1. Okay. Yeah, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having upon his Yeah, this seven is it, having heads. seven heads and ten horns. Who what beast is this? It, is, got, it is the papacy. It's what? The Roman Catholic Church, the papacy. No, Daniel, let's go back to Daniel 7. This, the beast got ten horns. You, you agree that that for the beast is wrong. Correct. Okay, so you can't but switch it up in Revelation 13. Listen, it's still got to be wrong. There's, but we're going to go to the little horn yeah. of Daniel 7. Let's okay, see. but right now we're focused on right right now before we have, we go. gotta focus on Revelation thirteen and one about the beast. Right, let's go. Let's go to Daniel. We'll go to Daniel seven and yeah. answer that question. Yeah, Daniel seven and seven. See, I I, I don't want to offend you, but oh, white. No, that's no, how everybody learns. Yeah, but but I hate to say this. No, I don't hate to say it. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> White people do not want America to be in that to be the Babylon. It's always the white man that don't want him to be in there. It's everybody else. Well, but we America, believe, that's America. We believe that America is Babylon. Part of the part system. Of, become part, part of the system. We believe it's part of it. Yeah. Okay, so the whole I'm system is Okay, Babylon. so I'm gonna ask y'all again. Yeah. I'm gonna ask, ask y'all. I asked him earlier. He believes that are y'all together? Y'all together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, he, from what I understand what he was saying, I don't want to miss, you know, representing him. But from my understanding, first we, we dealt, I don't know what we deal with first. But before we went to Revelation... We're talking, we're talking about, about the beast. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about the beast. And before we did that, we talked about the seven heads. We deal, we deal with the ten horns and we deal with the seven heads. Okay. Okay, the seven heads, we read verse 9, these are seven mountains. You understand? And Rome is on seven mountains. Vatican's on seven hills, the so seven hills are wrong. Okay, and I asked them, who are the five that are falling? The five that are falling? The five falling mountains. The popes? Wouldn't it be the five previous popes? No, no, it's not the popes. There's different interpretations. Yeah, but the one Do y'all believe they're literal mountains? The United States, I mean, no. So, like, um, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, the five previous ones. I'm not familiar. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay, but we can move on to this then. We can move on. Daniel 7 8. And I now, and you are correct. The last one was wrong. You and I agree on that. Yeah. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another one. What verse are you reading? Uh, Can you start at 7? Sure. Because that's the yeah, 10 horns. That's fine. Yeah. After this, I saw night visions beheld a fourth beast. <clears throat> Dreadful and terrible and strong and seedly, And had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Right, and who who did you believe that? We agree that it's Rome, right? The beast that got we ten horns. We believe it's the papacy, yes. No, wait, it's, wait, it's the what? The papacy, the Vatican. The Vatican. The Vatican. So the Daniel 7, fourth beast is not Rome. So like no, yeah, See, yeah, look, right. if you look at Revelation 17, 4, yeah. and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, a woman in Bible prophecy is a church. That's a Catholic church, purple and scarlet. They're all wearing it's their If you go down to here, now it says, Revelation 17, 4, it says, having a golden cup in the church's hand full of her abominations. Look at the Pope. And having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations. There's the Pope. But what's in, that, what's in that cup, though? 
Why? They say it's the blood of Jesus. Yeah. They literally no, I'm believe not about it. that, but I'm saying what the verse says. That's why you're but yeah, wine is, and what the wine is, is confusion. It's false doctrine. It's confusion. That's why when people are drunk, they get confused. The wine of Babylon is confusion. Exactly. It's confusion. I agree so that, if you look here, and it says, and upon her head was Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots. If you look here, the Catholic Church calls itself the mother of all harlots. Uh, I want to go, can you go mother. up. Church. I, I said that, but can you go up? When you go to the, the... seven hills of Rome. Okay, but can you go up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you go to verse... Um, hold on, read Revelation 17, one for the top. Because I got, I got here with a verse. I got here the verse. To see what it says. Oh, it's good that we're it's learning. A, yeah, it's, a point, I mean? it's a point on there I wanted to make. I wanted to 17 and what? You start one. God, it's the book of Revelation. Chapter 17, verse 1. It says, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come verse hither. Huh. Verse one, 17, oh, yeah, okay. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and inhabitants of the earth have made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman a sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. Right, so just because the woman sit upon the woman, hold on, hold on, let me read it. Because the, the woman, you can't say the woman is just a church because that's not how the prophecies work. And Isaiah, for, the nations are always referred to as women. In Isaiah 47 and 1, ancient Babylon, which is today Iraq, it was uh, 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 described as a woman. You understand? Many yeah, nations, Israel it, yeah, Israel describes as a woman. Many nations are described as as a woman. Right. So, so it's not talking about God's people. Well, so no, not not in this, not right here. Jeremiah six and two, Israel, the daughter is is, is likened unto a woman. You understand that? In Second Ezra ten, Israel is likened unto a woman. But in Revelation seventeen, this is talking about the this is talking about uh, Babylon. This woman is Babylon. Right here on key reading. Mother of all harlots. So yeah. that means it has daughter churches. No, 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 it, it doesn't. Because it's not a... Hold on, keep reading. Keep reading. Upon a scarlet-colored beast. Right. Hold on, keep reading. And because you say... Hold on, what was the purple that you said? He said they wear purple. What verse is that? Yeah, but when you read the Bible... Bishop and cardinals who wear those colors. I understand that. And, but also, this woman is wearing purple because this is a... This is not talking about Rome. This is talking about America. And this purple is because this woman... Is, is is royalty this is a, this is a royal kingdom on the earth whenever you read whenever you people are wearing purple it represents royalty when you read about the uh go to esther 8 and 15. when you people are wearing purple purple always represents royalty even rich the rich man and lazarus the rich man had on purple so this hold on, hold on I, I, yeah i'm kind of i can't read and talk but yeah when you read the scriptures like i said with uh the rich man and lazarus the rich man had on purple because purple represent royalty. royalty. You understand? Yeah. So this is a royal kingdom. This is a top kingdom on the earth. You understand? But you can read this too. This is Esther 8 and 15. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel. In royal apparel, right? Really? Of blue and white. And with a great crown of gold. And with a garment of fine linen and purple. Right, so every time you read the Bible, every time you mention purple, purple always is a representation of, yeah, royalty. And there's many, so when you go to Revelation 17 and she in purple and, and gold, that's because she's, this is a royal kingdom. That's why this, this, um, this, it's the same thing. That's also why this woman, it sits as, uh, almost like a virgin. She's a virgin because she's untouched. She's perfect. That's how she comes off. As if she's holy, she's perfect. She's a royal kingdom. You understand? And that's America. But we know America's not royal and perfect. No. America's well, wicked. Let me, let me put this And it's going to so be the story. Is, from a historicist interpretation, which is where part of a Seventh-day Seventh Adventist denomination is, their interpretation of prophecy, they picked up from the reformers. The reformers believe, many of the reformers, Martin Luther, Huss, Jerome, and all of them, believe that the first piece of revelation is Rome. When uh, the Advent movement began in the mid-1800s, they began to search the scriptures. They came to the conclusion the first beast is Rome, the second beast is America. America will eventually... Wait, what chapter are you talking about? The first uh, and Revelation 13. The first and second beast. Okay, okay, yeah, go yeah, ahead. There, there's two okay, beasts. you said it. Yeah, I know. You so said the first, a first beast is what again? First beast, it is by the Advent movement, it's interpreted as Rome, just okay. like the reformers the papacy. The, papacy. Yeah. the second beast is believed to be America because America came from the earth. The 
papers he came from a sea. Yeah, we agree, yeah, we agree with that. The, well, the Multi sea represents multitudes, nations. Yeah, Revelation 17 and 15. So the earth would be the opposite. It would be an unpopulated area that rose up from nothing. And in around the late 1700s, America rose while Rome was What's the mark of the beast? What's the mark of the beast? Sunday worship. Sunday, Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. When it's enforced. Remember no the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all they work, but the seventh day is. So you think the mark of the beast has already passed? No, it's, it's coming. They're gonna it's oh, it's coming. When, They're gonna force it. When America forces a religious law by the state to force the population to observe a day of the week, for one, to stop. I'm gonna have to break that down for to, you. I know, but for one, to stop the calamities that are taking place and also to bring back to bring back morality. Uh, well, let's look at. Oh, so hold on. I, I think I just missed something. So you said that America is gonna force this religious law, which is Sunday worship, right? Yeah. They're gonna legislate. Because the original legislate. Sabbath is Sunday. Climate change. Yeah, Friday, Friday, Friday. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah we're the Sabbath keepers. Yeah, yeah, behind the climate change agenda. But what did you say about morality, though? Well, you know, if you pass a Sunday law, the, the idea is going to be, if you pass a Sunday law, this will bring morality back to our country because yeah. right now it's in chaos. Yeah, we have no morals. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so I agree with that. And I'm going to tell change. you what, the right-wing Republicans are ready to grab hold of power when they get in, and they're saying the majority of Republicans want to make our country a religious church and state will unite. Is he with y'all, Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's Jerome. Yeah. You look here. What's this? Did you get one of these? No, I didn't you get one. Are you to take Big one? business. I mean, it, it's, I mean uh, there's impending conflict. It talks about the what is, like, what is it talking about? It's like, what is it about? Controversy. It's basically about church and state uniting. Yeah, it talks okay. about so the So look here. So remember it says the kings of the earth fornicate yeah. with all the kings of the earth. The church will fornicate. Look what, the, look what just happened. The Pope is ushering it all together right they now. They just partner with the Pope, scene. man. All the Fortune 500 be, companies the in the world just partner said, with so the, the Pope. The Pope could be exalted as the moral authority of the world. Pope and, calls some new and world And the governments order. give allegiance. And by instituting Sunday, they're saying we give authority. But to how do y'all know they're going to institute Sunday? Where do y'all get that at in Revelation 13? Look up Climate Sunday. Revelation 14. The first angel's message. Fear God, give glory to him. The hour of his judgment has come. Worship him and create the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. The Sabbath commandment says six days you shall labor. For God, it says that God created the heaven, the sea, the earth. In Genesis, it says um, it speaks the same language. So when the, when the first angel cries, fear God, give glory to him, the hour of his judgment has come, it's people saying, it's angels working with humans, people saying, don't follow this system that's being instituted. Don't accept this Sunday law. The authority that God has given us in his word is Sabbath. I don't really know if they got the force a Sunday law because it's people already worship They're gonna on do Sunday. It. And that's what I mean. It's like, oh, yes. Okay, so read Revelation 13 and 15. Never had to show me this Sunday law here. Right, right here. This is how they're going to do it. Yeah, I see. I see you. So but, we have you to, but we have to read it out the Bible. Okay, I understand. But well, think about this. Okay, so the left is climate change. Hold on, let him finish. Okay, Revelation 13 and 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. So what do you think the image of the beast is? That's St. Peter's Basilica. That's the capital building. And that's the Does that look the like an image to that? The, here's the, right. Let me let me see. What scripture? Y'all have to back these things up with scriptures. You can't just show me a book and not believe it. So How do you know, I know the Vatican the image has an obelisk in their in their actual center? They have an obelisk, and it looks identical to the Washington Monument. Okay, that's fine. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. And cause and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast. Should be killed. Worship. 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 Worship is going to cause them to accept the mark. Image. Hold on, I want to. That's the image. We saw the mark. I asked you about the mark of the beast, though. Let's keep reading. Worship. And he caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand or in their forehead. How are they going to do that? Deuteronomy 6 8. Deuteronomy 6 8. The hand is your action. I know that. And your, 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 your thoughts. I understand that. But how is that Sunday worship, though? Because if it's legislated, you cannot buy or sell. You're not the only way the they commandments. Can, the only way that your hands or your mind. The only way you can buy and sell is once it's instituted uh, digital currency. You can't do anything. They can shut it off. Remember, okay. Peter said you break one, you break them all. So if they can keep you breaking the fourth, you He's broke the all ten. You broke all ten. Hold on, hold on. So y'all saying, y'all saying, look, okay, look. Y'all think that they're gonna enforce this Sunday worship yes, on us? Yes. 
Even though the whole world is already in Sunday worship. They don't have Yo, to enforce they it. it. Yeah, yeah. They'll accept it. Go. Okay. Yeah. Right, let, me, let, me, let me answer my question. They're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with y'all. They're going to yeah. force Sunday worship. Once they force the Sunday worship, people going to think this is more, it's a more right thing. They're going to be more accepting to yes. it. Yes. They're going to do that. At this time, you're going to have the dollar is going to crash. Yes. You understand? That's what y'all said. Now, digital cash. Yeah, yep. digital cash. It's all somehow going to come and, in together. So yeah, yeah, and now you, if you don't go to church on Sunday, they're going to turn your card on, your, your digital cash yeah, on. Now, hold on. Yeah. What, what the hell? hell? No, no, it's them. Here, this oh. is a lot. So, watch this. Y'all hey, been watching. I, 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 no, no, no. I got a question. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah. Okay. So, say say you did have to do the, the virtual currency or whatever. Yeah. You, and you didn't know. We know that the Lord is merciful. Yeah. You didn't know. You was just trying to pay your bills. No, oh, sorry. Can you repent from that? Can you say, oh, I didn't know this was the mark of Well, yeah, he winks, he winks at your but lack of knowledge. But the says you can't. He repent. winks at your lack of knowledge. Well, everybody will have the opportunity to know before this occurs. You know what, what, what does it say about the angel? I want to say I appreciate you guys talking with us first What does it Thank say you. about the angel who illuminated? The earth was illuminated with his glory in Revelation. Which and an about? angel came down and the earth was illuminated with his glory. Well, the scripture says you can repent from anything outside of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But the point is that you cannot buy or sell. Or I, keep, I keep reading that. Keep reading that. Yeah. This is let him keep reading. Hold on, let him keep reading. We're going to finish this first. Finish. Okay, okay, finish. This Revelation chapter 13 and verse. I'll read 15 again. And he, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. And caused that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast. What's the name of the beast? <laughs> Vicarious Feely Day. You said what? Vicarious Feely Day. The title of the, the, the Pope. Oh, How do you have the Roman name of the numerals. beast? Right here, I'll show you. I got it here. Up to six, six, the Roman six. numerals. So somebody's going to have vicarious... No, no, no. You already have it. It's already on his pocket. No, I'm saying, but the... But I'm saying, the people... How is the people going to have that? Let me step in for a moment. Because they're going to follow me. With, with this ideology, is that America is the spokesperson to cause all to worship the first beast. Right? So if America yeah. makes an image... The only the image that it has made is Sunday worship. But we don't believe that's a literal image. Cause look, we, we no, come, I understand. Okay, I understand ahead. you don't. Agree. I understand you don't. That's it. All I I, I, I I respect the fact that you guys view it differently. All I think that I, personally, me, all I want to get out is that just to try to get it out so you guys can hear it a little clearly. It's hard to explain it like on the street. You know what I mean? I believe it's gonna happen, and when you see it happen, so all, all I could say is America speaking is through its Congress. Senate, through the presidency, and when the church, right now there are all sorts of Republicans lined up waiting to get into office, uh, Bolberg, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, these people want to have a Christian nation. You guys have heard of the New World Order, and, right? All that kind of stuff, so when Illuminati. They institute a Sunday yeah. and say you have to worship. So America's pushing that. And basically, they're going to push the world into the one world government. If well, we're you not look, every that. world leader, who, who do they all recognize as a religious leader? The Pope? Yeah. All of them. Putin. America. Every single every single leader has to meet the Pope. Elon Musk met the Pope me, after he didn't buy Twitter. Let, he went and met him. Let me explain that. Hold on one sec, Dave. So look here. So you have central bank digital currency. Recently, the White House Office of Science and Technology released a set of technical instructions and recommendations for the central bank digital currency. Based on this, the central bank digital currency would be largely regulated and it would require permissions from governing parties. The central bank could also track purchases and restrict the user's access to the funds. And so whether but you listen, want to log online, online or whether you want to do your due diligence for Sunday, no, I got, I got when that time comes, when all this is implemented and they have the power to restrict and, and the image, see, Roman Catholicism ruled as a theocracy. It was a church-state religion. America is just kind of a republic right now. Yeah. It doesn't have church intermingled. But when the church gets a hold of the state, then it changes everything. It changes it.
it makes an image to what Rome was. Rome was the theocracy of old, and with America, if we become that theocracy, we will, we will give rebirth to tyranny, rebirth to persecution, because people are going to have in their mind, no, Sunday is the day of the week. Pope said so. It will be... I understand y'all so show me articles, what but what I'm believe. saying is, where do we see that in the Bible, though? It's so hard to explain, like, I'm well, at a half hour. Go to yeah. Daniel 7, 25. Like, we couldn't understand what you guys... Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, so with ours, for the Mark of the Beast, I'm gonna, I want to go there, but... Daniel 7, 25. Yeah, I know what it says, but I want to go there, but I want to yeah. deal with the image of the beast first. We are, are, from our understanding, the image of the beast is the, the beast... Like you said, we agree. You got two beasts in Revelation 17, Rome and America. Yes. We agree with that. You understand? Now, the, I agree America trying to force people to worship the first right. beast. You understand? The image, just if the image is that mean that you're coming in the image of the beast. You're coming in the, in the image of America. But you're following the ways of America. Correct. Whether you want to be a homosexual, that's the image. That's sin it be, and wickedness and evil that being pushed out here in America. And you're following that image. If you want to be a damn, I can see that. Yeah, if you want to be a damn, I can see that angle. Street, women's yeah, rights. women's rights. Sorry, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. If you want to be a gangster, that's all America's wickedness and evil. America pushes out. Yeah. No matter what it is, it don't have to be those things. It'd be a lot of different things. That people are conformed. their representations of America. You understand? So when you dealing, just like you have to be an image of Christ. Absolutely. You should be an image. You should. That don't mean you look like Christ. Yeah. That don't mean that y'all. He's Act six like foot him. two, Act and like he, you also six foot yeah. two. Is that you're in the image, you're a walking image of Christ. Yeah, so yeah. same thing. You have a just like in Ezekiel nine and four, it talks about uh, the angel putting a righteous mark on the people. So you have a righteous mark and you have a wicked mark. You have a righteous image you follow and you have the wicked image you follow. So that's what our and then we read Psalm seventy three dealing with the second coming of Jesus Christ. He said when he arrives that he's gonna hate the image of the people. He gonna and that's, that's Psalm seventy three. Yeah, that's Psalm 73 and 18. He's going to hate their image because what they represent. And like I said, Romans 8 and 29 and Colossians 3 and 10 talks about being in the image of Christ. Because it's, it's always a just balance in the scriptures. Doesn't it say in the scriptures somewhere, uh, kind of like where a man's heart is? Or where his treasure is also? No. As a man, so as a man thinks, so as he is. Yes. So that just is an image. So if you're following a false image... Basically, following the enemy, you're following deception, yes, and it would ultimately thing. lead you down the road to be in the image of the enemy. And yes, if you're following the right path, it's gonna bring you to be in the image of Christ. So that would mean that God would have uh, uh, two classes of people. There would be two classes of people at the end. Ultimately, yes, yeah, because you those have who people and those who don't. Yeah, exactly. Those who are following the Lord, they have they they're walking in the image of Christ. Those who are not, they're following the ways of America. You know what I'm saying? They're, everybody's pretty much doing the same thing. So you either following Christ. I can hear you. So would it, yeah, would it be the follow. commandments? Like, is what do you, it, mean? you guys believe the commandments will be the final law, the final issue, following the commandments of God? Well, you saying that's the image of Christ? No, yeah. I mean, would, would that? Yeah, be, I mean, yeah. You you walking you'll all his, like it says you are walking all his ways. So if they kept you from following the original Sabbath, but you. <laughs> what what would that be then? How would you be following they, but, his image? Because because they all the people the like we read in Revelation 17, the people are already drunk. What is they the Bible, all, what is already the Bible found say a sign? Is? What is exactly, the Bible that's what I'm saying. They're gonna get a, to to make a choice. As a sign. They're gonna have that's, to make yeah, a choice. Hey, can I, I, mean, I, I, can, I, can, I wanted I wanted to add a little something. Oh yeah, that's good. I want to add a little something. First, could we pray? Well, no, we we're not really gonna pray, brother. I don't even know what name y'all praying to, and the scriptures say don't pray in the streets. Jesus. Right. Hey, but right now, I mean, we ain't praying in the streets. We ain't doing it for show. We're just doing it for understanding. You know? We're we not going to, we, not, we don't feel comfortable okay. praying. Okay, okay. Yeah, see. Okay. Right. I, I have to pray before I read the word, so. Um, okay, you, you can do yeah, your thing, yeah, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, brother. <laughs> yeah, Abba Father, we just pray for wisdom and understanding and the guidance of your holy word. Yeah. That you may bring all things clear before our eyes. Standing in the interpretation of your scripture. Let's be praying. Your Lord, Jesus, stand to pray. Amen. Matthew 6. Oh, you told them. They, no, they say. So, no, what, what I want to do is just probably get to the root of everything we're saying. What's the line? Let me go to Matthew 15. What verse are you reading? Chapter 1, John 15. I'm saying, like, what verse? Oh, you're starting at 1? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, do your thing, do your thing. It's actually one of my favorite scriptures. I think I think everybody 
kind of going back and forth, but the root is, what's the root? The root of anything starts with where you plant from. John 15 is the source of how the, how the righteous are going to be the righteous and how the wicked are going to be the wicked. You don't receive the mark just in one day. You receive the mark based on the, what you're connected to. It's a process over time. You see what I'm saying? It's not something that just occurs and then you make a decision. You make multiple decisions that lead up to that very thing. Okay, so when you go to John 15, it gives you the foundation. And it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can, can ye, except ye abide in me. Number one, he says, abide. All right, so the fact that in verse one, it says that if every branch in me don't bring fruit, so every branch in him is not necessarily being productive. True? I mean, do we agree on that? We're bringing it out and open everybody agree on that? All right. With that being said, how do we bring forth fruit? There's a key point here, that, the, the point that I'm making is that when we bring forth fruit, there's an evidence how we bring forth fruit is to abide. Now, how do we abide? In prescription. That's right. And then also in uh, Joshua 1 and 8, Joshua said, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but, but we meditate on it day and night, right? That we may be a, careful to observe, to do according to all that is written therein. So we are to meditate day and night. We are to be connected to the vine through constant constant meditation and reading and meditating on the story through prayer, right? So now look, in verse 4 it says, Abide in me, I'll read that story, verse 5. And I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides not in me, and I in him, the same shall bring forth fruit, much fruit, and, and for without me ye cannot do nothing. Verse 6, If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So the separation of the uh, uh, of the branch and the vine represents fruitlessness, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you're not connected to the vine, uh, to the vine, then you're losing the sap. You're losing the Holy Spirit. So that means that every one of us that started from that that branch, that foundation, has to remain in there. So the mark of the beast is those who are disconnected. <laughs> Mark of the beast are those who are not keeping his commandments, those who are not observing on a day-to-day -day basis. This is based on a relationship. This is based on an everyday growth, every day, single day. Now we go to um, um, Malachi. Go to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Father, thank you. Verse 2 says, it says, uh, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all proud ye, and all that are do, or all that do wickedly, shall be stumbled, and that that day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that feareth my name shall the son of righteousness arise with the healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as the calves of the star. Now notice this, it says the son of righteousness shall arise with the healing in his wings. Well, what's wings? How can, how can wings be successful? It has to have air. What's air? It's breath. What's breath? Spirit. What's spirit? Life. Well, the wings are the chariots. We read Psalm 68, uh, yes, uh, 68 and 17. Do it. Do it. I mean, that's, I, so like, I agree with you that, all right? But yeah. however, it's still dual meaning. So the, the point is that they got more than one meaning. There is air underneath wings, right? Yeah. True. So the whole thing is about spirit. What does, what does the sun, actually the sun of righteousness represents when the sun arises, there's two forms of light. So there's a morning, and then is there's a- Is that a literal a, sun they talking about? Yeah, or? sun of righteousness, as she went. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So this, the sun of righteousness is resembling the spirit. So that the sun rises up, when healing in 
his wings, which represents the spirit, the life, and which represents the breath. Evening starts at 12 o'clock. You agree that's the real quick, you agree that's the Messiah you know, said it was dual for talking about the sun. It's literally just yeah. the sun. No, no, it's dual. It's, it means the son of righteousness, meaning as you win, and it represents Christ as well. The son of righteousness, they both mean the same. And so it represents the son, it represents the spirit, because when I was telling you about how to abide, we abide in Christ, but that's that light that we abide in, it excels. But there's two forms of light. There's a light that starts at 12 o'clock, which is evening, it's morning and evening, and that light also descends to grow closer and growing uh, more closer to darkness. And then there's a light that rises up consistently that grow closest to heaven. So we got two forms of light here. And the whole thing about abiding in the vine is that that vine, of those who abide in the vine will be on the side that will grow closer towards the sun of righteousness, which is S-U-N. It's the sun that arises. It's a continual growth. It's a continual acknowledgement. And then there's a form of light that appears to be godly, which is the godliness that's de uh, denying the, um, the power thereof that grows towards earthliness, that does not consistently arise in heaven. So there's two forms of light here that we're dealing with. You see what I'm saying? But we're dealing with John 15 is abiding in the vine. And so that's what it's all about, brother, is that we're not abiding in the vine. We're not going towards righteousness. We're going to have another form of life that's going to be going towards earth. Christ is the vine, but what people are also the vine? Like, who's the vineyard? We are. Not Israel. Again, no, no. But we see? Christ. Yeah. So we read Isaiah 5 and 5, it said, or 3, Isaiah 5, 3 through, uh, I think it's like 7. It's talking about Israel being the vine, Israel being that vineyard. You understand? So Israel is the vineyard, Christ is the vine, but also Israel is also the branches. Like you said, connected to the vine. Because the branches, as you see right here, it can't do nothing unless it's connected, like you said, to the, to the vine. You know what I'm saying? If I break the branch off, it's dead. You know what I'm saying? If I break the branch off, then it's all the, the branch gonna be worth. Like, like it says in verse four, you know, without me, you can do nothing. Right. You understand that? So that so that's we have like you. I agree. We have to be connected to the vine, just like this branch has to be connected to that tree. However, what I'm, my point is, is that Israel is the one being connected to the vine. So when you read the prophecies, who is salvation for? <clears throat> it says neither Greeks nor Jew. Everybody that I think we got different ideas. Be Abraham, everybody would be Abraham's seed at that point. You are who Christ believes Christ. in Jesus. You know what I mean? Salvation is for everybody. Everybody's like Israel to distribute that light unto the, the world. Personally, the, the Israel of Revelation is different than the Bible. What, what makes you think that? Pardon me. What makes you believe that Israel is like? Well, the 144 yeah, towers. I mean, spiritual, spiritual Israel. Israel. Spiritual Israel. Well, what's like, to say spiritual Israel? Well, you're talking there is no uh, yeah. Greek nor Jew. There's neither Greek nor Jew. It says there's neither Greek nor Jew. Yeah. At what? that time. What, you know what'd you what say? Mean? You had ancient Israelites. Yeah. In the beginning and the end, God says he's going to raise up. They're going to be. Well, they got a book. I'm going to get going. I'm going to start passing. Yeah, get Galatians 3. You guys got a book. What I was trying to get across was look, just. Just to encourage you guys, you guys already keep the Sabbath, so all I would say is if you oh, see you this Sunday law, when you see the talk of a Sunday law and governments are talking about it, like just like when remember you see this COVID-19 on the That's when you it. see COVID-19 on the news, yeah. you're gonna be seeing Sunday law on the news every day. They're already coming out with climate Sunday right now. When you right see now. that, the mark of the beast is fully developed. Once it's instituted by law, everybody will have to make a decision. Right, I'll say everybody but how? But my point is this. Okay. How will they then know? with the market of beast. Y'all keep talking about, which well, we I, agree. Y'all say the market of beast. I'm just expressing to you. So you know, I understand you might have a different viewpoint. I'm just expressing you my conviction of what I've come to. But what I'm saying is how y'all get in the Sabbath, right? So, you know, we all talked about, oh, I got you. I'm going to say this first. I'm not going to read the scripture. But we all talked about the, the, the breaking of the commandments. Basically, that's just a stand in the market of beast. You see all these people buying food? Right there, yeah. They're all breaking the Sabbath. Yeah, I don't know that. But listen, but you're saying, look, That's the breaking of the commandments is the mark of the beast. You know no, what I'm no, saying? No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. My point was when the Sunday law is legislated as a government policy, just like wearing a seatbelt, just like abiding the street sign, just like all the other laws, when the government institutes in America, the entire world will follow. Other governments will say, do it, do it. Well, and it gives with, their uh, power and authority I understand to, that. I understand what to rise saying. to authority, yeah. and then he becomes... But what I'm, what I'm asking is, y'all yeah. basically in the mark of the beast is the breaking of the commandments. If you don't, like you, like he brought out John 15, if you don't, those who don't abide in, in uh, that vine, they're going to, you know, they're not going to, that's the mark of the beast. 
But how you can just pick a specific commandment and say, okay, it's the like, what if it's like, oh, those who don't wear fringes is the mark of the beast? What if it's those right, who eat pork? Like, like how going back to Mosaic law? Well, I, guess well, they, well, I mean, even if it's the commandments, it, why, why don't you, you say those who? Go ahead. Well, yeah, it could be a number of ways, but. Daniel 7, like, like, you can say, why, why is it not like, not honor, thy, like honor thy mother and father. If you don't honor thy mother and father, then you got the market done. How do you pick yeah, yeah, Sabbath specifically it, it, and say that's the one? Well, that's why I just brought y'all to John 15, because it's all about abiding, because you got to keep the whole yeah, law. The whole law. The whole law. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, but they just say when, you, when you specify on one day, then it becomes... Like the Catholic Church oh, chose Saturday, 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 Saturday to Sunday. They don't say over the Bible. The Catholic Church says the Sunday is a, the, the mark. The Catholic Church has said in their own history the Sunday is their mark of authority over the Bible. It. The Sunday is our mark of authority. Okay. So, that's all. That's all. You want to read Daniel 725? I promise you, you read some of this book, it'll put it all together. I mean, I already know what it says, you know, but we can read it though. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. And he shall speak great words. Everybody get out of here so we gotta go teach. But you go ahead. Hey, and he's, I appreciate it. Mm, appreciate it. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Times and laws. Times and laws. The yeah. only and they shall be given under his hand. That's not. That's not the only commandment to do with times and laws. You have the new moon, which they changed that as well. They, the new moon, where the new moon represents where the month begins. That'd still be the Sabbath. You're trying to say that for the. Well, Sabbath, the new moon is not necessarily the new moon. The new moon. The new moon is a Sabbath, but you can still cook on that Sabbath. So the new moon is not necessarily the, exactly the Sabbath day. You can, it's some Sabbaths, but you can still cook on it. But also, also, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. They also, they also change when the day begins. They also change when the year starts and when the year ends. Right, the day begins in the springtime, but you know today the. In America, the day be, I mean, see, the, the year begins, uh, you know, in the winter. So, so you believe we have to still have to keep the feasts? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I believe that. See, he believes that. Oh yeah, it absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah. This, 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 this is the feast of the over. trumpets right now. This is why we out here to blow the trumpet. Oh yeah. It says. It Who's says. The watch? Huh? Who's the watch? Who's the watch? We the watch. Yeah. We the watch. We the watch. We WFR. Everyone who take on the commandments and take on the, the prophets are the, the prophets the are the watchmen. The Israelites are the watchmen, and we the, blow that trumpet, which is through our, with our own spiritual level, our voices. We blow through our voice like a trumpet, like I said, Isaiah 58 and one, and we blow the trumpet to forewarn the people that war is coming. Like I said, Jeremiah 15 and 22, the sound of battles in the land. But do you know what it means if you do not blow that trumpet that somebody's blood? We got First Corinthians one and ten. We gonna slide. That's the Father's word. That's very clear. So that goes right back to the trumpets. So I mean, if, if that is something that we can agree on, then we know that the beast cannot. They say throughout your generation. Right, bring it up. First Corinthians one and verse ten. But y'all got y'all got listen to this right here. Let's read it. You got this. This is First Corinthians chapter one verse ten. Bring it out. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Right, so we all gotta speak the same thing. So, but but we gonna go over there and start teaching. It was nice talking to y'all. Hey, you, hey, you know, Thanks, nice. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hey, we're hey, let all. Let some we all believe. Y'all, man. Thank you. Yeah, right. we gotta fly. We gotta fly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I'll be over there, man. Okay. All praises. All praises. All right.